Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. Yay, the weekend is upon us. And actually, this weekend, for the first weekend in a while, I'm not working on the weekend, except I will probably do some door dashing. But otherwise, I'm not working for the hospital. None of the hospitals. Neither hospital am I working for this weekend, so I get to kind of have my own schedule this weekend, and I am so grateful for that. <sighs> I have my goals t-shirt on today. Goals, because our goal for today is learning some new habits or instilling some habits that we already know about. We don't have to learn them, we may already know them, but we're gonna enforce those habits to help kickstart our day with a stress-free morning. So, before we get into the four tips, I would like to kinda build the backstory about why reducing stress and managing stress is so important to me. So I'm going to go ahead and give you that backstory. So set the stage, if you will. It is June, 2020. I had just moved back to North Georgia from Southwest Florida in January of 2020. In February of 2020, we decided we made the decision to take in a rescue Siberian Husky. She was a lot of work. She was a handful. She was high maintenance. She was a character. She was everything a Siberian Husky is, except throw in the fact that she was a rescue. She was two years old and we were her fourth owner in two years for this Husky. So she never had the chance to bond with anyone and like develop her human as Huskies do. So June, you know, from February to June is just a few months. So she didn't trust us. We didn't fully trust her. She was still learning us. We were still learning her. So it was a whole process. And on top of that, we were early months in, think of February, March-ish to June. We were still really early in on the heart of what became the big 2020 pandemic. Like everything in my life wasn't stressful enough up to that point. Now we have this added mystery virus, you know, with all the concerns that come with it. Um, what is it? Is it, you know, like, how much is it really going to affect the population? Am I going to get it? How severe would I get it? Is anyone in my family going to get it? You know, and then, of course, there's always that question. Am I going to lose someone that I love to this virus? Because there was a lot of unknowns in June. And so, lo and behold, I got sick. Very sick. Extremely sick and I developed pneumonia. Now, I work in the hospital system, so I know that the biggest majority of people in our hospital at the time in June were COVID patients, and the biggest portion of those patients were admitted with COVID-related pneumonia. So when I got pneumonia, I was like, it has to be it. I must have the virus. So there is a little urgent care place about two miles from my house and they were doing the drive through testing. So one morning I put my Husky in her crate and decided to go to the drive through testing before work. When I got there, I was very symptomatic burning up with a fever. They wouldn't let me do the drive through testing. They said, no, you have to go to the main uh, urgent care facility building, which is in town. So that's another like five miles away uh, because you have to be seen by a doctor. So I leave there. I go to across town to the urgent care 
facility and it was a whole process back then. Um, you had to stay in your car in the parking lot, call them from your car. You couldn't put your windows down. You had to have your windows up. You had to call them, let them know you were there. Someone like full suited up, came out to your car, brought you a gown, mask, the whole nine yards. You suited up in the parking lot and in your car. And then they escorted you or they escorted me around the back of the building and in through an exterior door from the back, not through the front door at all. So I go in there, they do the, the test, I'm sitting there waiting, the doctor comes in and he's like, your test is negative. You definitely have pneumonia and we're gonna put you on some antibiotics for it, but your test was negative. He said, and he sit down and he said, but we have to talk. And I'm like, okay. My blood pressure in the office that morning was 208 over 110. Now I've been working in healthcare uh, for long enough to know that that was extremely dangerous. Now they couldn't let me leave the office with a blood pressure that high because I could have an absolute stroke and die on the way home, cause an accident. It was too much of a liability. So they actually, my dogs are trying to wrestle. Um, they actually wanted, yeah, we went from one high Siberian Husky to three now. But anyway, they wanted to call an ambulance to come to the urgent care office, pick me up, take me to the emergency department at the hospital. Now, I tried to explain to them that my dog, which was still new to us, still pretty young, was at home in a crate. Nobody was going to be home for hours because my husband was at work. And... I couldn't go to the hospital. So since they couldn't let me leave, they kept me in the office for several hours, giving me doses of medication until they got my blood pressure down. Until they got my blood pressure down, not to a good level where they wanted it, but low enough to where they were okay with me going home on the condition that I have a primary care doctor and have an appointment scheduled to see that primary doctor, primary care doctor before I left their office. We had just moved back from Southwest Florida when I worked in Atlanta at the hospital on site. I used a primary care doctor there. So I did not have a doctor here in this area that I live in now. So they spent time working with me, helping me find a doctor uh, that was in my network, scheduling the appointment. Then they finally agreed to let me leave. So fast forward from there, I show up at my new primary care doctor's office, checks my blood pressure, it's still kind of high, way higher than what they wanted it, but luckily not what it was at the these dogs at the urgent care and that noisy one. She's the first one. She was our first rescue. Anyway, so he's going to write me a prescription for some medicine, but then he says, he comes in and he sits down and he said, we need to talk. Well, the last time I heard that it wasn't good news. So I didn't assume this was going to be great news. And he said, Tell me what's causing so much stress in your life. My apologies. I actually had to go close them up in the bedroom. They sound like a pack of wolves fighting. Anyway, we're back to my doctor's office. And he said, what is causing you so much stress? I was like, I don't know. I hadn't thought about stress. And he said, you know, granted to a degree being overweight and having a poor diet can cause you to have elevated blood pressure. But he said that the condition of the state of my blood pressure, how high it was running, how it seemed to be 
kind of resistant um, to the medication. Like it's almost unmanageable. He said that that level of blood pressure deterioration, I guess, whatever you want to call it, like having my blood pressure that high for such a long state, he said that was absolute stress related. So he said, so talk to me about what is causing you so much stress in your life. Well, I told him, I said, you know, I don't really know where to start. We, we moved to Florida. We moved back a year later. Um, my daughter lives in Minnesota now and she's pregnant with her first baby. And I'm really like distraught over thinking of my baby girl so far away, uh, pregnant with her first baby going through this and I can't be there to be a part of it with her. Uh, we took on this new dog. The dog is very high maintenance. The dog uh, is a lot of work. I do work from home, and but I'm home with the dog all day long. So every time the dog like needs, wants anything, you know, I'm the person the dog comes to for it. So, and I was like, and then look at this year. Um, it's been a very scary, stressful year. Like what is going on with this pandemic? You know, what is going on with this virus? Um, and I've been sick and I said, there's just a lot of things I guess going on. So he wrote me some prescriptions, which it, my blood pressure really never stabilized with one medication. And so now I'm on two, two medications for uncontrolled hypertension, high blood pressure due to stress. So this is why stress is extremely important to me. But that day in his office, um, he said, here's what I want you to go home and do. He said, I want you to sit down and think about all the things that are causing you stress in your life. And I want you to think about what are the things that you can do to eliminate that stress or to at least reduce that stress. Like if the dog is causing you a lot of stress when your husband is home from work, he has to be the one to take care of the dog. You can't take care of her all day long and then take care of her all night. He has to help. He said, think of things like that. Think of anything that can help you bring your stress levels down. Because if you don't, I will tell you right now, you are going to die. And don't you want to live and see your new grandbaby be born? Because if you don't get a handle on your stress, you won't make it to see your grandbaby be born or you won't see him grow up. That was pretty sobering and it's almost like the pneumonia and being sick and worried about it being the virus was all like completely irrelevant at that point but it was almost like it was kind of like one of those a blessing in disguise because if I had not gotten sick I would not have gone to the doctor to get the test which they would have sent me to the urgent care who would have found the blood pressure at that level. So that is my backstory as to why managing stress has become the single most important aspect of my every day. And with that, now we are going to go through step-by-step step, the four main steps or the the four main focuses that I utilize every day to help me reduce my stress and manage my stress. And hopefully you can learn something from these or, you know, maybe pick up some of the tips or decide on your own that you want to try these or other, you know, ways that you can find to manage your stress because, you know, stress, 
like hypertension, high blood pressure, stress, they call those the silent killers. And there's a reason is because they don't really have any symptoms until they get to the point that they do have symptoms. And at that point, it's so late in the game that there could be, you know, damage that cannot be repaired. Like the damage is done and it may not be able to be fixed. So we're gonna go through these four steps, these four uh, habits to form and try to get you on your way to having a much less stressful morning as well. Okay, so the first habit that or I guess it's a habit. The first thing that I can give you as far as reducing stress in your morning is generally the first thing you're going to do in the mornings, really before you put your feet to the ground, before you get to the bathroom, before you do anything, you're going to wake up. Well, ideally, that's what you're going to do every morning is wake up. But how you wake up can really impact like your stress levels once you get out of bed. Like at night when you're sleeping and you go through your cycles of REM sleep, which is your restorative sleep, if you are awakened, especially during a REM cycle of sleep with like, one of those loud, obnoxious, like beeping, rah, rah, those alarms, you know, that just like, it almost like kicks in this adrenaline inside and it can cause you to feel stressed before you even get out of bed. And I watch Angie Belmar, so I'm going to give her credit for this. Um, she was showing that she has one of those sunrise alarm clocks. And I thought that was just the coolest thing. So I looked up one. I like did a little shopping for one, read different reviews on them, kind of like did a little research on them. And I got me one. And let me tell you, it was... I want to say life-changing. It probably wasn't quite that drastic, but it has definitely made a huge difference on waking up because it's um it's called a sun a sunrise night lamp night like alarm clock. So when you set your alarm, basically what it does is it turns a light on, but it's not like a, this harsh, bright, like fluorescent type light. It's a really soft light. It's supposed to like simulate a sunrise. So actually about 10 minutes before the actual alarm goes off, the bulb will kind of start waking up and it'll just start with like this really soft light and then just gradually get a little brighter. And then when the alarm goes off, um, I have mine set for birds chirping and like this little chime. So it's kind of like this whole like snow white vibe, you know, the, you think of all the little forest animals, you know, waking snow white up. That's me. That's me with my little forest animals waking me up. I will put in a little clip and kind of show you what mine looks like and how it works. But how you wake up is like huge as far as like setting the tone for your day. So if you wake up, like a soft, gradual wake up. It's so much better for you than to just be startled, you know, from asleep with like this lot, this loud, annoying alarm clock. And if you're one of those people who are fortunate enough to get to sleep in every morning until you naturally wake up on your own, well, we hate you. I'm kidding. We don't hate here. Hate has no space in this place. But I'm just kidding, I'm just jealous. But um, yeah, so having the way you wake up determine how you start the day, like it's really critical as far as like reducing stress. 
Another thing is like, I have a diffuser that I use in my bedroom at night. Um, especially when you use oils like, you know, lavender, cause lavender is calming and eucalyptus helps with your breathing. So when you have the diffuser going and it's kind of, you got like this spa like vibe going on. And I set mine up at night and turn it on so that when my alarm clock goes off and it's like daylight, my sunlight is coming through my fake sunlight and my alarm clock with my little chirping birds, I can still smell the lavender and eucalyptus in the room. And it just, it's just very inviting to wake up to and very calming and it just kind of helps keep you centered and grounded when you wake up. Now, once I get out of bed, I um, I also follow Ed Milet. I don't know if you've heard of him. If you haven't, where have you been hiding? Ed Milet, you need to find him and you need to listen to him. But in his morning routine, when he talks about his morning routine, he talks about a cold morning and hot night or cold morning warm night so like taking a warm shower or warm bath at night to kind of calm you down before you go to bed but in the morning cold either taking a cold shower or at least splashing cold water on your face so when i first get up first thing i do is get out of bed turn my alarm off Go into the bathroom because that's usually what most of us need to do first thing in the morning. Um, but after I, you know, do my morning pee and wash my hands, I have like a little face towel. It's so soft, sweet little soft face towel that I got from the Dollar Tree that I keep in my bathroom to wash my face in the morning. So when I first go in there, I go ahead and wet it with cold water wash my face, rinse my face with cold water, and there I've got my cold start. So even if I wait, and even if I have a cold shower later, like after I work out or something, I've still got that little splash of cold to my face. It helps wake me up, but it's still kind of as, it's still refreshing. So, and then once I come out of the bathroom, the first thing I do come out of the bedroom is have some lemon water. Um, water is the great way, the perfect way, and everybody tells you that it's a great way to rehydrate yourself after you've gone all night sleeping. And everyone tells you to drink lemon water, but why? Because lemon is a natural antiseptic and it really helps fight bacteria and antigens in your body. So you can't be stressed out when you're taking good care of your body and fighting off all the ickies and germs. So that's kind of like the first component of this is waking up, like how you wake up, what you can do to kind of like lower the amount of stress when you wake up. So that is like, you know, using your diffuser with your essential oils, a nice soft alarm. If you can't have like a sunlight alarm with chirping birds like I do, there are alarms on your phones. And I don't really usually ever encourage phones in the bedroom at night. My phone is not allowed in the bedroom at night and it sleeps in a different room than I do, but I do have an alarm clock, but some people, have to rely on their phone for an alarm clock and that's fine. You can still find a different alarm. I've seen the alarms on the Apple phones. I have an Apple phone and, and before I got my, my sweet little sunrise alarm clock, that is exactly what I used. So, you know, a little cold, a little splash of cold water on your face, wash your face off and then hit some lemon water. So that is habit number one, which is your waking up period, like setting yourself up for a nice, stress-free, relaxing, calming, yet invigorating wake up time. And a wake up, like a little wake up routine, a little cold water, a little lemon water, nice little chirping birds or some soft music, some nice little essential oils. 
But that is the first step is determining how you want to wake up that is going to keep your stress levels down. So this is my alarm clock and I will show you my settings that I have for I have my time set. I have the little chirping birds and the little chime. This is how the light comes on. It also has a sleep mode. You can set it to um, play like white noise or like sound of the ocean before you go to bed at night. You can adjust the settings of the light. So you have like the sunrise or you can set it to colors where it'll just kind of change out the colors. I just keep it on the sunrise. And then there are the different things that you can play. There is an AM radio. And then you have, this is what I have set, my birds chirping, but you have a nice little rainstorm. I think that's a little heavier storm. My chirping birds. have the ocean waves and then you get into your white noises take a deep breath in one two three hold the air momentarily now exhale one two Feel the tension leaving your body. Take another deep breath in one, two, three, and out one, two, three. So that is my alarm clock that I use. It is called a sunrise alarm clock. You got a little breathing exercises you can do. You can set a sleep timer where you can listen to the ocean noises or the breathing exercises for a set amount of time before you fall asleep at night. You have your alarm. I have mine set on the little chirping birds and the sunrise where it just is a gradual, I think it starts like 10 minutes before your alarm time is set and it just like kind of comes on like a little dim light and then just slowly gets brighter until the alarm goes off. So it's just kind of more of a peaceful, more relaxed way of waking you up than a harsh alarm clock. Additionally, having a diffuser in the bedroom when you sleep is very relaxing and very calming. If you use essential oils like lavender and eucalyptus, they really help um, to improve your sleep at night. Eucalyptus helps with your breathing. We have three huskies that sleep in the bedroom with us. So you think of pet hair and pet dander. So having clean air is extremely important. Plus lavender is very calming and helps you sleep. It's relaxing. Also, when I set my diffuser at night, um, I just turn it on. Instead of set hours, it runs through the night, and when I wake up in the morning, it's still going. So, I have my 
sunrise alarm clock that wakes me up slowly and calmly. And then when I wake up, I still have the scents of the eucalyptus and lavender in the room, which is very spa-like, very calming. So it really helps um, cut down on being a having a stressful morning to start out. Like you're you're calm and you're centered when you first wake up because you have this whole like very calming, very peaceful start to your morning. Okay, now our second habit is probably something you've heard of. You may already do it, but you would be hard pressed to find any kind of guru out there from Tony Robbins to Andy Frisella to your local librarian to Warren Buffett who would tell you that these are not key to their day and they attribute so much of their success to this. So, say it with me, morning routines. Yes, so the second habit is having routines. Now, in my planning, I break my routines down into three components. And that is mindful morning, morning routine, which is, they're all morning routines, but I put one specifically say morning routine for a reason, mindful morning and movement. Those are my three components of my every day morning routine. Now, mindful morning is something that I kind of adopted based on the book, Miracle Morning, The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. And maybe you've heard of it, it's a pretty popular book. Um, and that's just basically these concepts of what they call the savers. He calls them the savers. And basically that is like having time set aside every morning for kind of like intentional time for like setting your intention for the day, like just kind of get putting yourself in a good headspace. So SAVERS is spelled out, it's spelled out SAVERS, that's the acronym. So the S is for silence, which is meditation. If you're a person that prays, time in prayer, um, just quiet time, just sitting. Sometimes I'll just sit outside um, in the quiet, just, just a quiet, silence meditation and that's just kind of where you just clear your mind just take a few moments to just have that peace and solace and just clear headspace the a is for affirmations because when you set your intention for the day you kind of want to have like your affirmation or your mantra that is going to kind of be like your I consider it like the battle cry of the day. And then the V is for visualization. And now the way Hal puts it in the book, visualization, you can have a vision board, work on a vision board, or you can just kind of like internally, like just have some moments to visualize yourself. Like if you're on a weight loss journey or fitness journey, like visualize yourself running a 5K, um, being at your goal weight. Um, if you're like trying to, you know, buy a home, visualize your home, visualize yourself in your home. If you want a business, visualize yourself working on the business. It's success, like visualize having a successful business. 
And a lot of times what I do is I do have a vision board and sometimes I work on it, but I don't work on it every day. But a lot of times what I will do is when I go for my morning walk um, or I'm doing my affirmations, I kind of will visualize, like I will let my affirmations kind of be like a guiding principle of my visualization. And as I like say, my affirmations out or internally if i say i'm inside to myself um i will just kind of visualize like the affirmation come into fruition the e is for exercise and i actually don't have that be part of my mindful morning time that i set apart uh, because i just do i look at exercise in and of its own self, like its own entity. And I like keeping that separate. The R is for reading, um, doing a little reading every morning. And then S is for scribing and journaling. So when I mark off my mindful morning, that means I have read. How, if I'm reading 10 pages a day, if I'm reading a chapter a day, if I'm just reading a little bit, I'm reading um, or listening to an audio book. I'm doing my journaling for the day. I'm doing a little bit of uh, meditation, doing some morning affirmations. A lot of times on YouTube, I'll pull up like a five minute meditation or I have a Fitbit on the Fitbit app. They have like little morning mindfulness exercises where it's kind of like a little guided two minutes or five minutes where you concentrate on your breathing and you just kind of like clear out everything and set your intention for the day. So I will do those, um, do my journaling. So journaling, reading, my mindfulness, um, meditation, breathing exercises, and the vision, just kind of like taking a few minutes to um, visualize myself where I wanna be, what I want to achieve. And then a lot of times on um, YouTube, I'll find like affirmation videos. I, it can be anywhere from like a five minute affirmations till sometimes I will turn them on and turn the volume up on the TV. And while I'm doing my morning routine with my house, I'm listening to and repeating back the affirmations. So that's my mindful morning, which is just basically clearing out everything from your, like your head space, kind of like taking a breather, setting your intention for the day, kind of slowing down, ingesting something, you know, good and fruitful into your mind, like with your reading, doing a morning podcast, listening to a podcast, audiobook, uh, doing some journaling. So that's kind of what my mindful morning is. Now my morning routine, I put that separate. But one thing else I want to add on the Miracle Morning or my morning routine is I also have, when I work on setting my intention for the day, I have these four core concepts that I use that I try to um, um, utilize, make them a part of my intentional uh, purpose for the day. And these four, it's called the core four, and they came from this book that I read, and it's by Sean Whalen. I'm gonna try to get that without. Um, and it's called How to Make Happen. It's make more money, get in better shape, create epic relationships, control your life, do it now. So I will link these books below just in case you're interested in checking them out if you don't know about them. But the core four is like four main components of your day that you are supposed to work on every day. And the first one is passion and that is your relationships. 
The second is power. That's your body. Purpose is your mind. And production is business. So when I go through my mindful morning, reading, journaling, visualizing, affirmations, that is this purpose, the mind, what I'm doing to set my intention for the day and work on getting in a good headspace. That is my purpose. The power, the body, that is working out. And I, you know, I have my movement. Production and business, that's like anything I do that's work-related or I work three jobs. I have two part-time jobs and a full-time job. And sometimes I try to work on like different things, whatever I want to do. Anything that I want to do that may be like business or job related, that's my production. So I have to work on something. And then passion relationships. A lot of this mindful morning, um, you know, like the journaling and the meditation, you know, I'm working on my relationship with myself. Uh, and then when I'm in a good headspace, I'm in a good place to have a healthy relationship with other people that I'm in relationship with, like my husband, my children, my grandchildren. So everything I do is kind of built around fostering these four principles. And what you're supposed to do, like the, the big thing with this is every day you set one daily timed goal or a task to complete that will move you towards your goal. Now, like overall, like we have our goals, like the things that we want to achieve. So each day in these four areas, I will have time blocked out that is scheduled. And, you know, it's timed, it's blocked off, time blocked. And I will do one thing during this time in each of these four components that kind of move me toward my overarching, my main goals. Uh, and each, each task or goal, here um, you have your action steps, there's three action steps. It has to be daily. So every day you have to do something in these four, these four core components. It has to be timed and scheduled. So it has to be put in my planner or I have to have a timer on my phone. And when the, the third one is non-negotiable. So when the timer goes off on my phone that, you know, tells me one of my tasks I need to do that day, I can't think about it. I can't hit snooze. I have to immediately turn the timer off or the alarm, the alert, and get up and do the act or the task at that moment. So that is my mindful morning. Now, my morning routine, and I follow the fly lady routine system. And basically that morning routine is the time that I do like my personal, like my skincare, my self care, and my house, taking care of my home. Because, you know, when your house is unkempt, untidy, um, chaos, clutter, causes a very stressful environment anyway. So there's just a few steps that you, that I do every morning. That's my morning routine that I follow and it just kind of helps eliminate a lot of the stress. And so those include making my bed. As soon as I get up, I make my bed, get dressed to shoes. I work from home and it is so hard for me to want to wear shoes in the house all day long, but I do go to the park and walk. I do try to go to the gym, you know, a couple of days a week, or if I even just go downstairs to my basement to work out or go walk in my neighborhood, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get dressed to my shoes. Uh, one thing is swish and swipe, and that's just basically in the mornings, you're just gonna like kind of wipe off your your toilet and your sink just every morning. It takes like two minutes, but those are things that are used all day long throughout the day, throughout the night. So just kind of freshen them up, just wipe them down. And that's when I get up in the morning, 
Um, usually first thing I do is go to the bathroom. So I just go ahead and like quickly like swish and swipe while I'm in there. I'll go ahead and like wash my face, cold water. Then the next one is going to be to eat breakfast. Now that's where I struggle a lot because I, I get up early, but I don't really want to eat early. So if I'm not ready to eat, I will usually just have me like, I'll fix me a smoothie because uh, I'm usually always thirsty when I wake up anyway. And I have some water. I have my lemon water, but I'll have me a smoothie. And that way it's got a little something on me to carry through finishing out my house chores. And then when I go do my workout and then I get logged in for work and usually at my first break is when I'll go ahead and cook me a breakfast. And that's when I have like some eggs or oatmeal. The next step is to start a load of laundry. Just throw a load of laundry in to wash when I first wake up. Then at some point during my morning, I go down, throw it in the dryer. And then most days before I even log on and start my work day on my job, I have my laundry already done, washed, folded, hung, put away. And then the last step of this is check your calendar. So like I have a planner like like this is one of my planners. Like this is my school. This is kind of like my school and my uh, personal development planner, my self growth personal development. And I have another planner that I plan out like my work schedules, uh, my cleaning routine. Like if I'm doing like deep cleaning, uh, any appointments, it's kind of more like more like a home planner. This is more like a personal you know, only related to me planner. So I plan out like my podcast and stuff. So what I do every day is I have a daily planner and between the two, like I'll plan in these for the week, usually on Sunday night. And then on the mornings I'll go through and I'll write down like, what are my tasks, my main task priorities. Like I will show you my daily planner. So, and it's called Getting Things Done, Daily To-Do List. You have daily to-dos, priorities, meals, and notes. So, like, you will put the date down. Uh, it's got a space for four priorities. Logging my food. So, if that way I can just kind of pre-plan what I'm going to eat for the day. And then I don't have to worry about, like, getting hungry and I don't know, like, standing in the refrigerator door or the pantry door trying to decide what I want. I'll already like kind of have an idea of what's available. I can plan out my day and know what I'm going to eat and then a list for like additional to do's and then a space for notes. And then on this space, I put like I put in my daily intention for the day and then I wrote out some affirmations. So this is kind of where I was like working on my mindful morning and my daily planning all at the same time. So, yeah. So that is, that is kind of like my planning routine. Um, so I follow the fly lady cleaning routine. That is like my morning routine. And then, you know, to check my planner and that's kind of when I go over my daily to-dos and priorities. My mindful morning is kind of following along the miracle morning and adding in the four core concepts of Sean Whalen's book and then doing my little filling out a daily planner because this is portable. It's small, it's portable. It's flexible, I can bend the pages. So this is just easy to transport and take around with me, carry it around through the house if I need to. And then I don't have to carry all my bigger planners. Then my last morning routine, because I have the three components of my morning routine, and that is movement. And I already pre-plan throughout the week if I'm going to do a workout at home. I have a little home gym set up downstairs in my basement. I have, you know, access to tons of YouTube videos. I have the Fit On app, the Neo U app. So I have lots of 
workouts you know, at my disposal at home. I have a gym membership, so I plan out what days I wanna to go to the gym, what kind of workouts I wanna do when I'm there, and then walking. Um, if I wanna to go to the park and walk, if I wanna walk around my neighborhood. Some days I just go downstairs and walk in circles in my basement, it just depends. But as far as like, reducing the amount of stress in your morning. Nothing will bring your stress level down for cheaper because you can't get any cheaper than free than walking. Like walking is completely free and you can read any psychology or any medical journal on the benefits of walking and your mental health and your stress. And you're not gonna find anything that doesn't tell you that walking is a great mood enhancer. It lowers your stress levels, it lowers your blood pressure. Like if you're walking at least 15, 20 minutes a day, um, you just wouldn't believe the difference in like your mental state because when it's rainy and gloomy and I just talk myself out of going out to walk, I can tell such a big difference all day long. Then from, even if I work out, even if I do a workout at home, but if I just don't get outside outdoors and go for a walk, like I can tell such a difference. So one of the best, most absolute easiest ways to reduce stress in your morning and cost you absolutely nothing is to go for a walk because it releases walking and exercise releases all these endorphins and especially when you're outside there's just something so beneficial to being outdoors this is my journal right here and when i work at the hospital i take it with me I throw it in my work bag, but if I go to the gym or go to the park, if I go to the park to walk, I throw it in a bag in my car. If I go to the gym, I will always throw it in my gym bag because I can stop by the park when I leave the gym. Even if I don't like do like a whole hour walk, if I just walk like 15, 20 minutes or just walk one or two laps around the park, I always will find a nice, quiet, kind of secluded place um, after I've spent a few minutes outdoors, get my journal out. And that is like the best time for me to your brain dump or just purge anything that's been weighing on my mind. So this little journal right here, this thing travels with me everywhere. Okay, so that was the second. So we've got waking up and our wake up routine, our wake up schedule and our routines, which my morning routine consists of three components, which is my cleaning morning routine, my mindful morning routine and my workout routine. Next thing, the habits that can reduce the stress in your day is your environment environment are you surrounded by clutter because clutter it just creates chaos when there's just clutter and stuff going on i have three siberian huskies some days they wrestle and play and sound like a pack of wolves going insane in the house they're they're banging into stuff, they're knocking stuff over, they're so loud, I can't think. And I have to work from home. So, my environment is very important and sometimes hard to manage, but I have to find little ways and little things to do to kind of bring down some of the stress level. I can't get rid of my dogs. Now, like you saw earlier, I can put them in a room and close the door and kind of give them a timeout and put myself in a timeout for a few minutes. Or sometimes I will actually just go outside. If it's it's cloudy outside today, it's been raining, so it's gross out. But if it's been sunny and warm, 
and it's not wet outside, I will just go outside. I will leave them in the house. I will go outside and sit outside for like 10, 15 minutes. It's the best thing I could do for myself, bringing my stress down. But in my environment, like I said, I work from home and we have like one of the bedrooms in the house set up for my office. Most of the day, the dogs are in there with me. And sometimes because I'm in there all day long and the dogs are in there with me, um, they can they bring dog toys in all day. If I'm sitting at the desk, sometimes I'll bring planner things. I'll bring like planners. I'll bring like journals. I'll bring stuff in. And the room can get really cluttered really fast and really easy. And I have to be really careful about that because again, clutter creates chaos and chaos creates stress. So it's like a vicious cycle. But um, another thing I've been kind of getting into, which I've always, always been into it. I just didn't realize it ever had a word. And that is the Danish word of the Danish lifestyle called huga. And that's like where you love cozy things like warm drinks and fuzzy socks and cozy blankets and candles. So all of that is very calming too. So in my office, I have to try to make sure at least every couple of days I go through and completely declutter it and clean it up, vacuum dog hair, pick up dog toys, do all the things. But I always um, try to keep a nice candle in there just so that I've got a nice calming scent going. I have a diffuser in there because I love the one in my bedroom so much and I spend all day in my office. I got me a diffuser so I will run it during the day and it just helps like the oils and the scent in the air very kind of spa-like vibe, very calming. So I use that, um, but just, so just be aware of your environment. Um, and then if you, if you implement good routines, like morning routines and not routines, like at night, like say you have a routine where you, you wash all your dishes, you know, load them in the dishwasher, you pick up your living room, you know, like you do the thing, any laundry is put away so that when you wake up in the morning, you're not waking up facing chores, house chores and stuff that need to be done. That's going to reduce the amount of stress that you have in the morning as well. And then finally, our fourth, fourth habit um, to help reduce the amount of stress or to start our day off stress-free is to plan. If you have a good plan in place, you have your good routines written down until they become like second nature, write them down every day. And that's what I still, I've been doing my morning routines for a while. I still write every day on my to-dos, my morning routine, I write my evening routine, I write working out my diffusers. I make sure that I fill my diffusers every day. Then I do like what, house cleaning tasks I need to do, um, like clean the bedroom, dust the walls, laundry, um, swish and swipe. I make sure that I have that done every day, journal, read 10 pages, take my medications. So the things that I need to make sure that I'm doing, and I don't write out like each step of my morning routine. That's, I know, I do write that I need to read and that I need to journal, but I need to make sure, have I done my morning routine? Has the laundry been done for the day? Has the bed been made? Um, have I journaled? Have I read? Did I do a meditation this morning? Evening routine. Did I get the dishes done? Is all the laundry put away? Do I need to run the vacuum before I go to bed? Do I have my clothes laid out for tomorrow? Like if I'm going to work out, I'll lay out my clothes. If I'm not going to go to the gym or if I'm not going to go to the park early, I'm just going to like do some stuff at the house 
first, you know, I'll just lay me out like a pair of shorts and a tank top. Now, I am lucky in the regards that I work from home and I don't technically have to log on to work. I log on for my work to start my job at 11 a.m. So I have quite a few hours in the morning that I can do all of these routines and then I can practice these things to have kind of a very low stress day when I start my work day. But even then, I used to work in Atlanta and I used to commute in Atlanta traffic every day for several years. It was, it was crazy, but I did it. And, uh, and you know, there were times I would get up at 3 a.m., go to the gym to work out so that I could be back home by 5 a.m. so that I could do my morning chores and get ready to go to work so that I could be at the hospital in Atlanta by, you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock, depending on my shift. My shift always changed. It was like 7 to 3.30, then it was like 8 to 4.30, and then it was like 9 to 6. I always worked crazy shifts. It was always changing, but the point is, is even then I made a point to try and make sure that I did the things that I needed to get done in the morning to have a good morning routine. And now, since this whole thing happened in 2020 with the blood pressure and being on the medications, stress and doing the things that I need to do to decrease my stress levels is more important than ever. So, and that's another thing, if you have to work you know, like if you commute and you're in traffic, an audio book, because you, you can't, you know, be focused on being stressed out at traffic and other drivers. If you're like listening to a good audio book where you're just kind of like concentrating on thinking through what the narrator is saying, or you're tapping into your creativity and you're thinking of ideas of new things you want to try or something that you want to do later. So if you're, you know, you're kind of in tune. By the way, it's fun. <laughs> Siri, if you're kind of in tune with the, um, with the narrator, you're not as, you're not as stressed out and worried about the other drivers. If you don't commute that long, like if you don't have an hour and a half to two hour drive one way, like I did when I worked in Atlanta, um, a podcast. I always listen to at some point during the morning from the time I get up until at least by my lunchtime break at work, which is usually by 1230, I will listen to a podcast. I don't care if it's a 15 minute podcast or an hour long podcast. At some point in the morning, I will listen to a podcast that just kind of sets me up, you know, helps me out for the day. Again, that's probably part of my mindful morning, but it's still something that kind of helps set me up for a good day and can kind of really help bring down the stress levels. So I know this has been kind of a long video, but, I mean, stress can be dangerous. Stress can be very dangerous. It can be, it can be like, seriously, like life-altering, life, life-threatening. Life it can be fatal, stress can, if it's not kept in check. So, it's so important. And if you've made it to the end of this video, I'm so thankful and grateful for you, and I hope that you got something out of it that you can use or something that you'd like to implement into your day um, to help start yourself out with a stress-free morning. So just, you know, just recapping the four, the four habits. Um, you're waking up, like make sure that you're waking up in an environment that is calming, and less stressful. You know, just find some way to wake up that's just kind of gonna be inviting the day in. 
routines. You're going to want to have a good routine because you can't be stressed about, you know, you can't find your clothes for today. You don't have clean clothes for today. Um, you're running late. You know, you don't, you don't have anything to thaw out for dinner. Like, um, if you have a good routine where you're, you know, picking a few house chores that are done every day just to kind of keep the house maintained and I have no deep cleaning. It does, doesn't have to be deep cleaning. No deep, I don't really do deep cleaning at all through the week most of the time. Um, just giving yourself a little morning de-stress that, um, you know, do a little meditation, some reading, listening to an audio book. If you don't have time to read or don't, just aren't really a big reader, just as long as you're listening to something that's kind of like helping you get into a good headspace and working out. I mean, honestly, there's just nothing more to say. There is no better mood regulator than working out and if you don't want to spend any money but you want to have a good like a good headspace work out in your home there's tons of workout videos on youtube go for a walk that's honestly a 15 20 minute walk in the morning is probably the best thing you can do to like lower your stress level lower your blood pressure and set yourself up for a great stress-free day and then throughout the day just be mindful of your environment try to keep it decluttered as much as possible and tidy kind of set an atmosphere um one thing i do also i mentioned the affirmations on youtube here's something else that i do on youtube um there are tons of videos like this right here. Um, it's just a little stream with some little, you know, you can just kind of hear the noises in the forest. I will turn on my diffuser in my office and turn this on and just kind of set it behind me. So I hear the sound of the water and the birds, but I'm working. So just make sure that your environment is conducive to you know, being de-stressed, calm, inviting the day. And then finally, just plan. Plan out your day. Plan out your evening. You know, when you have a good plan in place, you're going to stick with it. You're going to have a lot less stress in your day because you're not going to wake up in the morning and be looking for things and trying to make decisions that have already been made for you and laid out the night before. <sighs> and with that, I know this video is extremely long winded, but um, I felt like it was all important. Like everything I covered is are the things that I use myself and I know the benefit and the impact that they've had on my life personally and managing my stress and my um, uncontrollable elevated blood pressure. So I hope again that you can get something from this and I hope that you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.